Welcome to another podcast. Uh, this podcast is going to be a little different this time because I am joined with a co-host. I've never had a co-host before. This is Rob J. We, uh, we did three podcasts together and enjoyed it so much that we thought we would do some more. And we have a, a guest today who is a, a um, what are you, a senior Android developer and you work in Brazil and you're working on an app that has over a million downloads, which is a lot of volume. So I'm really interested to ask you some questions about that. And I'm sure Rob has some good questions too. Yes, lots of questions. So, um, so what's your name? Let's start with that. Okay, uh, my name is Frederick, uh, Brazilian software engineer. In fact, indeed, um, I'm working with Android since 2017. So I'm not so senior like that, but I am a senior software engineer indeed. So what, what, what did you do before Android then? I did many things. Uh, I came from industrial software engineering and uh, the things there is very, very different. The scale of the, the, thing, the, the, scale of the application. So few users, um, the thing is much, much different from work with mobile applications. So I worked already with artificial intelligence, neuronal uh, networks, uh, optimization systems, industrial systems, uh, soft backend engineering, um, full stack engineering, and uh, now I'm working with mobile engineering. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. So, like, how how long did you were you a software engineer before you started with Android? Well, I'm working since 2007. Uh, when I started a job with a uh, neuronal networks uh, and uh, analyzing the mathematical things about uh, studying correlation of 16 uh, inputs in a process, industrial process to do something like a prediction. And uh, well, I can consider it that my professional start at uh, 2007. Wow, that's a long time. And um, all kinds of I'm different old. stuff. Yeah, my next question is going to be how old you are, but I generally I don't ask people that because some people don't like to tell their age. But, uh, uh, don't worry, I'm 36. That's, that's, I was going to say that's not true. Uh, Mitch asks people how much how old they are in a roundabout way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He doesn't that, want to ask how old you are. He just wants to tell you that you don't want to answer, so you feel like you have to. Yeah, so. that's uh, uh, generally it works out for me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man, and uh, I don't. I don't have trouble with that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, so you started 2007. That was right out of school. You just started to uh, work as a software well, developer. You got a job. Uh, indeed, I started with uh, de software development in the college. Uh, my college started in 2003. Uh, electrical engineering. Okay. And uh, indeed, my career uh, started very late because uh, for one idea uh, that I can give for you, my first email was as I had uh, uh, 18 years old, you know? It's a- uh, Your first what, strange, right? 18 years, with 18 years old, yeah. I had my first email. So the technology came to my life very late. So when I started to work, uh, to start engineering with 19 years uh, in 2003, I started to do some codes with uh, C and C++. And well, I have some trouble with that <laughs> because that was my first time. But uh, my professional uh, career uh, indeed uh, started at 2007, you know, like a trainer. Okay, so, so what led you down the path to Android? Because you, you said you've tried so many different things, basically all the types of software development, uh, backend, web, I heard you say neural nets. Um, what, mm -hmm. what, brought you to, what brought you to Android? Well, in 2017, uh, until January, I was working in an industrial company, uh, working with driver development, some, something like that. And uh, Brazil is like, a, it's not a stable economy, you know? So uh, we are facing a very, very deep uh, economic trouble in the country because of world crisis. And uh, my company fired some 
some people there, uh, a, sm a small with a small team of engineers, and uh, I called to a friend of mine, a manager who is worked with me at my first job, and uh, he uh, asked me if I would like to work with uh, MVP, minimal viable product, uh, innovation product, for to develop. Uh, uh, some tasks with uh, for a new uh, idea with the company uh, uh, was trying to develop, but uh, in the, in fact uh, that idea uh, it's a uh, it was the Android uh, it was not the first option. Okay, we start the project with uh, in two, in March of uh, 2007, 2017, and uh, we did some proof of concepts. Uh, we applied design thinking to, uh, and uh, m uh, myself only with another manager. Uh, I, was, I was only the technical guy with this project. Uh, we start, we choose the, uh, the Android for embedded application. Okay. Um, so that wasn't of, the app. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Rob. Sorry, I was going to say, what kind of embedded application was it? Yeah, uh, well, we have uh, the problem it was um, we have a farm with uh, the product was uh, orange, okay? That farm, uh, the owner of that farm, it was one of the biggest uh, producers of uh, Orange, orange juice. Okay, mm -hmm. so we need to uh, build application for 44, 44 farms. Uh, in any farm, we have three vehicles, tractors, right? And uh, inside that vehicle, we uh, we would we would um, uh, give us some installation of uh, embedded tablet, a tablet, industrial tablet. Uh, and That's that tablet, cool. yeah. yeah, and uh, that tablet would uh, it, this application offline first, okay, mobile offline first. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to track information of the weight of a big bag, uh, the big bag uh, in uh, 800 kilos. I don't know the the conversion for American. Units, but it's okay, um, I'm Canadian and he's European, yeah, so yeah, we're good. And <laughs> yeah, it uh, it was uh, a project with uh, uh, a huge challenge because um, well, we have a, f a pilot and an, an, uh, another project before we failed with another company, so the clients ask us to provide a best a best solution which need works with one. 33% of the initial uh, budget, right? right. So uh, we have a uh, few money for to try to solve a huge, um, a hard uh, challenge that, for example, I have a big bag with 800 kilos and uh, the physical action of any uh, disturber over uh, oscillation of the big bag, uh, we have a, a, a very deep oscillation in the metrics on the variables of the system. And uh, the, we, uh, we don't have money enough for the system. So we have on, one tablet, one uh, Bluetooth reader, uh, a serial device too, and uh, to communicate with the server. Know? So we have a math challenge uh, beyond the IT uh, challenge too. So. so this was like, okay, I'm just trying to paint the picture in my head of like what this thing looked like. So it's a, it's a tractor and you have some kind of a weighing device on the tractor, yeah. which yeah. is connected serially to the tablet. And yeah. you want to uh, constantly weigh it while you're harvesting the fruit and then pass that information to your server. But first offline, so just get the thing to weigh it and like get the weight on the tablet, I guess is what you're yeah. trying to do. And you're saying the biggest challenge was 
the variations in the tractor driving, you know, hitting a bump and then the yeah the, the weight fluctuates or whatever. Yeah, because uh, the challenge was we have oscillation all the time. The process is like that. The tra the tra uh, we have an arm, a big arm in the in the vehicle, which uh, go up with with the the big bag, and uh, the oscillation is. Uh, keep all the time so we couldn't stop the process all right because uh, I don't know we have three vehicles any uh, any vehicle uh, take uh, 700 by day uh, big bag so uh, the production was very hard so uh, we could not uh, uh, waste the time of the driver and uh, with that, the static, uh, the static um, situation, like uh, we have a big bag stop it, big, big bag there. And uh, with the oscillation, we have only uh, the acceptance criteria would be 1% of error. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was very hard. So I apply something like a finite state machine some things like that, uh, graphical analysis of the math uh, of the variables. And uh, uh, with that, we, we found a solution. In three months, the first release was ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, almost a pet patent uh, was born from that project. Can I, uh, can I stop you for a second? I'm hearing a weird noise from your audio. It's like, do you hear that too, Rob? Yeah, it's like a like a like a, a bassiness, but it's like tick 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 tick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you maybe? Uh, oh no, it's gone now. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> Weird. Okay, it's gone. Yeah. Magically. Okay. Cool. Maybe it's you, Rob. Uh, return, return. It's you. I think it's you because you Wait, you on, your frame froze. Yeah, hold on, hold on. And then it was gone. Yeah, it's gone. Now it's back. Unplug your mic, plug oh, it back wait, in. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I think I know what this one is. All uh, right. Is it gone? Yeah. Yeah, I knew it. What the hell was that? Like, this is what happens when, so I got a new webcam just uh. to do this interview, and I just realized it's got a mic in it, and Zoom is just using uh, that. Oh. So, I was going to say your time, webcam looks YouTube. way better. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's still not great. I literally just tried it today, and this is the best. It's good. I, I think it's good. Much better than before, right, cool. anyway. All right, yeah, before was the built-in one. It's horrible. Yeah. Oh, you're using the built-in laptop mic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my yeah, yeah. God. Yeah. I only, I only do audio. I'm prepared for audio. That's why I got this serious microphone. My webcam is, this is no. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> good, good to see that you're upgrading. Um, All right. So that, that, was your, uh, that was your first Android experience building an embedded system, I guess, right? That's what you would say. Yeah, it was the first. Yeah, yeah, it was the first. I was gonna say that is a serious first time Android experience. Yeah, that's like that's some that's pretty serious stuff there. Yeah, some of that stuff yeah. just gone over my head. Yeah. And the uh, rollout brother would uh, a millionaire rollout, all right. So the CEO was in the eyes uh, eager eyes on the project, the global CEO of the company too. So it was really hard the pressure of my back. <laughs> yeah, lots of weight on your back is that what you're saying yeah yeah so did yeah. you guys make some money doing that or what yeah because um trouble with the contract between the client and the the, the company where i was working the technical stuff is it's uh everything i already, already done and ready but uh because of trouble with behind the sides um the products die unfortunately Mm. So there was no like, no big payoff at the end of it for you. You basically just a uh, like a contract worker working at it. When it died, yeah. it died, kind of thing. Yeah, but uh, the technical stuff it's uh, it's already done, and uh, it's a uh, well, it's the reality, and some things could happen like that. Mm -hmm. So um, so what, what was your next job after that? After you finished, how how long did you work there for? How long did you work on that? And then what was what was next for you? Well, uh, okay. Uh, my next job, would, well, I was working on that company already, working like a consultant guy in another team. 
de uh, developing Adana drivers, something like that, for mobile device in Android. Uh, another, uh, another product uh, where I could speak in Android for a mining company, uh, the name, I don't know, I think that is not necessary to speak, mm -hmm. but um, it's, uh, in the same way, uh, it's like, uh, again, like, like I said for you, in the industrial field, it's different. The mobile applications is, uh, is different, no? Uh, but this this application don't don't has a mobile uh, offline first uh, nature. But uh, in the plant of that industry, uh, the mining industry, some shadows uh, could happen. So uh, in the same way, we have uh, one thousand. One thousand devices uh, running uh, embedded uh, vehicles and the Android uh, to again a legacy system that we are improving the architecture uh, and uh, scaling up uh, that application for another places in Brazil too. And uh, it was in 2018. Okay. So at what, what point did you get the job working for the company that you're working with now that, for the app that has a million downloads and tell us what the name of the app is also. Right. Uh, the name of app is Localiza Hertz. Uh, you can find in both platforms, iOS and uh, Google Play Store. Localiza and, uh, Hertz. Yeah, Localiza Hertz. Hi. Localiza, yeah, Hertz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, you gotta say it with authority. Yeah. Heights or heights. Heights. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, uh, I entered there. I started uh, in uh, April of this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, this app uh, has an incredible history because uh, uh, the app. Uh, had uh, a very um, worked before with a uh, hard framework. Uh, the framework is a pr for a private co company that I cannot speak, unfortunately, the name. But uh, the a hybrid framework, and uh, the things became very hard for the team. So, like uh, for example, today we have, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, 4.6 uh, and in five, the yep, review 4. score. 6. Yeah, and uh, 9,000 reviews, 9,300 reviews, lots of reviews. Yeah, uh, iOS is 4.9, mm. and uh, but uh, in January uh, of this year, uh, I think that in iOS it was 2.3. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. and. Uh, Android at 3.3, right? Yeah. But, and uh, it's very interesting in history because many things, the things become changed, changed uh, in 2019. The company decided to change the things that they're available. This, this is the main mobile application of the company. You know? And uh, you can, you can do a reservation of your car with that, with that application, for example. So our uh, company is about rent cars, okay? So you imagine. And uh, okay, the restructuring of uh, architecture, the languages, uh, everything changed for that, the app in 2019. Begin this, the project indeed started to change in, to, in the middle, uh, in, in June of 2019. Well, that is a great transition into talking about the technical stuff, because mm -hmm. you're claiming that in 2019, they uh, drastically changed mm -hmm. the code, is what you're saying, and it had some garbage ratings or very below average ratings, you know, in the twos on iPhone and Android. And now mm -hmm. both of the ratings are quite a bit higher, 4.6 on Android and 4.9 on iOS. So that's, yeah. and that's in only a year's time. 
So yeah. like, that's that's the pretty incredible. Release, no, the first release of the new version it was in February of this year in wow. Carnival. I mean, that's even Carnival. more amazing because that's like such a short period of time for the, the app to change so much. So what yeah. happened? Like, what was what was some of the? We'll start with the big picture. What are some of the big picture things that you guys did, and then we can get more and more technical because I know there's a lot of nerds listening, and they would love to hear about that. Right. So uh, the first thing is uh, we have we have two platforms. All right. In 2019, uh, the team uh, was facing some problems to find, like uh, if I. A problem like a, a we work with a cross platform. Uh, we work with native platform. We have a bad, bad, very bad experience with uh, hybrid platform. Uh, but uh, the main uh, uh, what thing was the hybrid is, platform? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, <laughs> no nothing against a uh, hybrid platform. Uh, I have another mindset, but uh, the experience with this. That framework that you, they were working, no one knows that for the, that framework in first place, all right? So it's, uh, I cannot speak the name, but uh, no one knows the framework. So, no, so, nobody so it knows. wasn't like PhoneGap or React Native or anything? Like no, 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 okay. no. It's okay. like based in JavaScript, but uh, no one knows this framework. It's a private <laughs> framework, right? Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, no wonder yeah, there was so many uh, problems. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and uh, the, the quant- rolling their own. Uh, yeah, the, 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 neither have I. <laughs> the business contract over this framework it was very, very expensive, brother. So very wow. expensive. Yeah. So, okay, the people. Uh, okay, uh, Flutter. Uh, we didn't found so much specialists in Flutter, and uh, the team have a deep knowledge of uh, nati- native language. So. A good thought would be like that. Huh? Okay, uh, the company could pay by the uh, good engineers that the base no the base's uh, language was uh, Java, Kotlin, uh, in iOS, Swift. So uh, the first choice it was okay native native uh, development. So the structure of the project begin with that. Kotlin uh, would be the for Android our choice because uh, Google was investing many things in the platform. And uh, after the architecture indeed inside the platform, uh, it was MV- MVVM, um, a modulariz- modularized uh, application too. And, uh, but the main concern that improved everything in that uh, solution is the BFF backend for front-end uh, architecture, which tends a lot the experience of the development of the engineers because uh, the team came from uh, knowledge of web systems and uh, it's web systems, the, the, man, the management of the API, the version of the API management is very different from mobile systems, okay? So the team suffered a lot before and I uh, would like to change the things. And uh, in my concern, I think that the application of the BFF uh, provide a great uh, experience for the so development. So back end for front end. Can you tell us more about that? Well, back end for front end, it's like, uh, okay, you remove, you, uh, you try to avoid to put in some kind of intelligence business rules your app, okay? Your app is dumb. Oh, uh, I okay? see. Okay. In, and uh, in the back end, have all the rules, all the, the API management, uh, get some the intelligence of the core, the systems. The app, uh, uh, the reason of that is show data to the, to the user and, and uh, uh, the user give some inputs on the, in the app, but uh, the true intelligence of the system is in the back. The back gotcha. End. That makes sense. So it's just a dumb UI and then the back end has all the logic and just tells yeah, you Yeah, it was the second time which I faced this kind of architecture. So, so how does that work? You, it, 
like there's literally no intelligence or just very little intelligence? Like, does it just, uh, user gets an input, it's, it sends like all of these requests to the server. The first thing that comes to mind for me is like, okay, what, what about offline? How does offline work? If all the intelligence is on the back end, how does it handle if, the, if there's no network connection or poor network connection or something like that? Well, when you think about uh, make a reservation in the, the mobile device, Brother, have uh, many things. It's our road behind of the mobile device. No, do you think to need that in uh, the company? Is there is a business scenario too? Uh, is facing a digital transformation in the company localiza. We are raising good engineers there, taking uh, bringing good engineer specialists in the market to change the scenario. This scenario changes in 2019 too. And uh, that is a reason, uh, again, to make the app different. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, in the, behind the scenes, like uh, you make a reservation. All right, I want to uh, do a reservation of that model of the car or model not, a group of the car, right? And uh, okay, you request, uh, some data from the backend. You have a backend where we make interface straightforward in my app. But uh, this interface, the backend for BFF, is only a gateway. Uh, even he does have a cache strategy because it's not necessary. Right? So you don't, oh, so you don't even have a caching strategy? Not in the backend. We make uh, a direct. Uh, interface with our system, which provides the API for our system, because our systems uh, use APIs only from one system, this BFF, all right? But uh, behind this BFF, there is an entire ecosystem of monoliths, um, microservices, deploying the Kubernetes, and uh, many APIs there. And uh, for example, so only uh, give you an uh, idea we have almost more than 600 uh, employees working in this environment, right? So the system is uh, incredible uh, big. And uh, for make a reservation, you go there, they request this API to the backend, the backend use the API gateway, the API gateway uh, go give you the right direction for which API he, he will uh, request the information. The request information needs necessary, find some uh, via, by balance, load balance and uh, some kind of algorithm to discover if you have uh, cards there. And uh, we use big data for make some predictions. If you, you have uh, uh, cards, for you to provide to the client. So, and uh, there are many things there inside. That sounds very cool, but I'm still confused about the offline. How would, how, go ahead. I was, I was gonna say, so two things, well, no, three things. One, I really hope that message that popped up is on the video. I don't think it would be, cause that'd be amazing. That would be funny. Yes, thank um, you Zoom, two. by the way. I didn't know it was a paid <laughs> service if you go uh, past yeah, 40 I think, minutes. I think it's 40 minutes, yeah, 40 minutes. Free, I never but... used Zoom before. Like I said, this is my first time and we've exceeded the 40 minutes that apparently they gave you for free. So yeah, that's cool. yeah. at, at least they gave it to us. That's very kind. Thank you Zoom. Thank you, you Zoom. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the other, the other one I was gonna say is I just realized if you hit participants, there's a button that says raise hand. So then, if one of us wants to talk, we don't have to. I was like, wondering about that. Yeah, yeah, I think it only, well, I can only see it show up in participants if I raise my hand now. I don't know why I did that in real life. Oh, let's click well. there. Let's, hold on, I got to. Low hand, raise hand. Um, I like this, we work it out as we go. Um, but what I was going to say is I'm, I'm assuming that in terms of the back end, there's no, uh, in terms of the offline, there's no offline because you're using the app to make a reservation. So there's basically no offline functionality, right? The same reason why there's no caching because the cache could be out of date by the time you make the reservation. That makes oh, there sense. Is right? a cache, a, there is a cache structure in the backend, not mm -hmm. in the backend of, of the, our system. When mm -hmm. I say backend of our system, is the backend which make con, uh, 
contact. We, we, we will request only from only one backend uh, the endpoints, okay, request information. Mm -hmm. But this backend is like a gateway, all right, for another system. Right. And like uh, we have uh, systems of reservation. So for example, uh, the, uh, the mobile give uh, pass by this gateway, this BFF. So we have an API of reservation where the API uh, go under ACL uh, structure for the reservations like in the cache, using cache like Apifrabic, uh, uh, you understand? Uh, it's a, a layer of anti-corruption, mm -hmm. ACL. And uh, this uh, there is a kind of cache. They go to another request, another information of another places, another servers. Uh, for example, we have on-premise servers, we have cloud servers, and uh, they got information from there. And uh, but uh, like you said, uh, we need we have to take some care because uh, we need to update the information. So uh, before we. Uh, I th in the first versions of this backend, uh, they got XMLs for bring the information, but uh, nowadays they update and uh, try to only update the some kind of informations to not mm -hmm. take uh, not the entire things again, again, and again, you know, and uh, use like a Sybase for and another kind of stuff for, to manage these things. The, but uh, this backend information, uh, hey, they are improving the architecture. Uh, nowadays, if we uh, got request uh, the mobile information for reservation, this guy go to uh, the gateway, the gateway go to for uh, API reservation, the API reservation communicate with another legacy system and another, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five APIs to get some information is and save the uh, reservations in a cache of, again, ACL. And uh, all right, another improvement would be uh, we will use di the straight of, uh, in a straight for interface between the mobile and uh, the mobile request and the uh, API of reservation, a Redis cache. Redis cache. Oh, Redis cache, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is API. Again, we communicate with uh, another legacy systems or, and uh, another API which needs uh, on time uh, information, okay? And uh, the future of that backend architecture uh, is like that. Do we have an uh, API gateway, a middleware uh, in this API gateway? But uh, don't uh, make confusion with our gateway with with those uh, requests, directory requests, all right? Uh, that API gateway is like a middleware. And this middleware make, uh, will make uh, connections with a website because you can make uh, reservation in the web uh, with mobile, iOS and uh, Android you make uh, communication with a uh, reservation center in Cal, human being. Uh, you can make uh, this, API, this API, you make uh, another integrations to with uh, enterprise channels. So this will separate off uh, reservation API, for example, behind the API gateway. Uh, and uh, this gateway, this API reservation, we communicate again, keep Redis, Cache, Kafka, too, and uh, with a uh, res reservation deep database. So, and um, in a future, uh, using GraphQL. So it's a, it seems like a mess uh, a scenario, but uh, uh, the things become better and better. Uh, the API reservation will be deployed in the Kubernetes too. And uh, because we have a monolith and uh, we are breaking this monolith. Into pieces. Uh, yeah, in the pieces. And, uh, and 
there is it. Do you have, uh, you understand? I think I do. I think yeah. I do. I'll, I'll repeat it back so that maybe you will tell me where I'm wrong. So it sounds like the, the app itself doesn't really have a cache, but you have, you have gateways that it's making requests with which have caches into them. Like you mentioned a Redis cache. So like say the signal's bad and you go to make a reservation or whatever, whatever type of data you're sending out, you send it out, it goes through it. The server does its thing. It caches that information. And yeah. uh, then, so regard, I, sorry. It's another information that I, it's a, only one system. I'm, I spoke, I speak for you. Yeah. It's there like a, like you others, have a, all right. It's a, yeah. there are many other systems. It's only one system, only one API behind the API gateway. Right. We communication with another entire ecosystem. So right. this is the only one that is another much. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's one, there's one interface that branches out into all of the legacy systems. Right. Yeah. So you make a request, it gets cached or there's some kind of a caching strategy in the back end that then branches out into all the legacy systems. And those are the pieces that you mentioned that you're, you're working on individually to improve. Um, yeah. So then you, if you have a bad signal, it gets sent through that interface that one, it's like a one way street goes out. Uh, so even if you lose the signal, that information is still cached on the back end. So when yeah. the signal is uh, better or you can manage to get it good enough so it can send out more information, it was cached. So it says, okay, hey, this guy tried to do a thing whatever, let's like go to the next step that gets yeah. cached. So like, regardless of how, if the signal is bad, obviously they're not going to get anything, but when they do get a signal, it does access the cache on the back end. So it's pretty much like you might as well have a, have a cache on the mobile device anyway, because you know, that's, that's the first thing that it's touching regardless anyway. Uh, yeah, even uh, if I speak that, uh, that is some cache in the mobile, Right, we use the shared preference <laughs> oh, okay. for only only some few data mm. of the user, but uh, mm. nothing more. Right? Cool, interesting. I've never heard of this uh, this kind of architecture before, but it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, uh, especially we don't use any kind of uh, DB uh, in the mobile, like uh, SQL, uh, SQLite Room. or SQLite, yeah. Room or something like that. We don't. It's not necessary. Right. Interesting. It's also, um, yeah, like I couldn't think of another way to like deal with a legacy system like that with so many different parts. That would just mm -hmm. be, sounds like a nightmare, but like, it sounds like you guys are approaching it a very smart, logical yeah. kind of piece by piece way. Yeah, it's working. Um, we suffer a lot already in the past, right? Uh, the company learns, the team learns uh, with suffering in some bad <laughs> scenarios before. And uh, we are, like I said, we are uh, in an evolving uh, situation that uh, we are analyze the past, the bad decisions, and uh, we are trying to do the things like now in the right way and this works, it's working very well. By the way, Rob, I can't find your, like put your hand up option that you were talking about. So if you hit participants on the bottom bar and you yeah. see all our names and then in the middle, well, at least I've got a button that says raise hand. I don't. Maybe it's because I'm the host. Yeah, probably because you're the host, actually. Okay. I can't even um, see. Can you raise your hand right now just so I can see? Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, what a little, <laughs> kind of little baby icon. I can barely see that. I was thinking it would <laughs> pop up on the screen, but I guess. No, I it's just. an option that says pop in. No, nope, that's something completely different. It's an, Oh, never mind. I can see it. It does go on the screen. Okay. Oh, there you go. There you All go. right. So now I can lower your hand. Get out of here. Yeah. But it's it's uh, it's okay. If, uh, the information it's good. Or are you? Yeah, yeah. This is no, no. That's yeah. that's super interesting. I got more questions, but like, uh, I asked for the high level, and I'd say that was a good summary of the high level. Um, very very interesting way to handle like improve upon a legacy system. I think like, mm -hmm. um, I I had one job in my life before I became you know, self-employed, I guess. And they had a lot of legacy systems at the place that I worked. And it was, it was absolutely a nightmare. There was like this random thing that only a person knew, only one person knew how to use who quit yeah. five years ago it yeah. existed. And then there's this other thing that like some guy who works very deep back in the building only knows how to work. So you got to go talk to that guy and like figure this yeah. anyway, legacy systems 
are garbage. It's a, a nothing but nightmares. Interesting that you guys decide to put, basically what you did is you put a wall up in front of all the legacy systems mm -hmm. and then the legacy systems communicate with that wall. And then that wall is the one access point to the apps. Uh, abstraction. It, yeah, yeah, abstraction. And then you, and now you can individually work on the systems uh, yeah. as opposed to trying to like work on it all at once, which is yeah. not a good idea. Yeah. And then you can swap stuff out and the front end has no idea that anything's different. So. Uh, it's a problem that we, uh, the team uh, face a uh, terrible problem it would be in the, the first version of the app before this transformation, they communicate with the end points uh, directly with, uh, with different systems, subsystems, right? Well, this is a, was terrible because uh, well, one team uh, needs to make fix some things, a rules, and uh, you have a version of your mobile mm -hmm. in the web, in the air, and uh, your version will be there until the end of the world. You know, yeah. there is the problem. You have many versions of the system, so yeah. the backend. Uh, th that is the reason that we take the business rules outside from from the app. This is the first thing it was necessary, you know? Yeah, great and idea. It helps a lot. Yeah, for those of you who um, want to know more about something like this, this is essentially clean architecture. It's you put, a la you put a layer of abstraction on top of something to separate out the different uses of it. Yeah, but a clean architecture don't, uh, don't um, yeah, it works pretty well, but uh, you can use clean architecture and uh, make bad things. Like, uh, oh, I'm using clean architecture, right? I'm giving some abstraction and my new view model is uh, called a, a use case, all right? So, but uh, this use case communicates, still communicate with the wrong endpoints, you know, with the many subsystems. If you still keep this, you will have trouble yet, you know? So um, the thing is, okay, you can apply any kind of architecture in your mobile, but uh, if you keep the rules inside the mobile, brother, depending on your, your ecosystem in the back end, you will have a serious trouble in the future. Yeah, definitely, definitely you can. I see exactly what you're saying. Basically, you've, you guys have sort of like applied clean architecture to the back end. And like you, uh, the, uh, the back end, uh, the architecture of the BFF is onion on the derivation of hexagonal architecture. Say, say it again. Onion architecture. Oh, onion architecture. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you, um, you mentioned a bunch of other things in the email that I sent you. Um, one of them being camera X, for example, uh, what are, what are some of the new, some of the new kind of Android tools, I guess that you guys are using in the app like Android X? Well, Android X. Or sorry, sorry, uh, not Android, I meant Camera, Camera X. X. Yeah. Camera X, uh, you use few things because uh, we have a um, digital signature and uh, we take the photo of the face and uh, of, the, of the user and uh, after the signature, but uh, it was few things. It's not not so much intelligence over there, right? And uh, yeah, there is it. It's a very simple script so, uh, using so, Camera so, X. So maybe a different question, or a different version of that question is: What are some of the more interesting things that you've implemented in the app in terms of the mobile app itself? Itself, yeah. I think that's what you're getting at, Mitch, right? So yeah. yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think that, um, well, one of the best things which it's done is the modularization uh, because, uh, okay, we are applying MVVM, but uh, for me, if you apply, I have a private, uh, oh, a private thought is, uh, okay, you can use MVP, MVVM, MVI, I don't know. It's only a kind of organize your information and you write your code. And, uh, but uh, the truth is uh, the modularization helps a lot uh, the app because uh, 
the back end uh, follow the DDD, right? And the domain drive design and uh, concept. And uh, we are future, uh, we are creating models by future. Any model have your own domain, all right? And uh, this give us a clean, clear idea about what we are, how we are organizing the things. And uh, well, nowadays, if someone, uh, for example, would like, I oh, know I want to organize the team inside in, uh, over some sub model. So we can take this model with your domain, something like that, organize the information in another teams and uh, make it a, whatever, I don't know, a marketplace or super app. It would be easier because we could split easily the physically too the repositories, for example, for some subgroup of models. And uh, this is a kind of idea that I'm trying to develop with the team together to make the things smarter. Like, uh, I know I will have uh, two guys uh, working a pair in this model. This model works a reservation. I know I have another two guys working another kind of technology. I don't know, Flutter, maybe, why not? And uh, this model is working, I don't know, uh, uh, digital signature or something like that. So physically splitting the repositories would be a good idea because uh, the continuous integration would improve to another step. And uh, yeah, I think that the, the best thing that happens inside the app uh, beyond the language, beyond the act clean architecture, too, is the modularization. So, are we talking modularization? So, when you're talking about repositories, are we talking about like you have a Android Studio project or an Xcode project, and then you have separate modules in there for each feature, or are you talking about literally splitting them into different, say, GitHub repositories? Or well, have I got that wrong. Before I answer your, this question, it's important thing that uh, both teams, iOS and the Android teams, equalize in the same way and try to follow that equalization of the architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, in iOS, they follow the same structures of clean architecture, MVVM, and something like that, like uh, in the Android, all right? And then uh, that idea raises because, uh, I, uh, okay, uh, Today I, will, I work with Android, but I want to work with iOS. So it would be easier to understand the rules, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. But uh, uh, about, uh, you make a question about uh, continuous integration, something like that? No, so when you're talking about the actual modularization, yeah, like, mic, sorry, get closer. Yeah. Okay, cool. You got me? Yeah. You can hear me? Yeah. Sure? Sorry. Okay. Um, you're also really quiet, by the way. I don't know if that's my mic. Do I have the right mic on, first of all? Let's check. Uh, Meet, do yours. Yeah, I am not feeling you uh, listening you very well. Sorry? Your sound is uh, is low. Low sound oh, here. Yeah. Oh, I wish someone said something earlier. Damn it. No, it's been, it's, oh, no, I'm really loud. It's been good the whole time, but just now it's quiet. Interesting. Uh, um. How about okay, now? It's there you go, there you go. No, no, it's <laughs> somehow my mic volume dropped to half. Okay, now it's back up. Is it good this now? This is why we. This is yeah, it's good. This is why we like technology. What the hell? Uh, like, mic volume just randomly dropped to sixty percent. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, another uh, one thing. On uh, after, I would like to speak the name of the team. I, I think that would be very good. You uh, may I after the team of say whatever you like. You are right. Yeah. Okay, it'd be great. Um, so did you, was your question answered, Rob, you think? Uh, no. So my question was like, how does it, in terms of the modularization, how does it actually look? So, you know, let's say I, if I get your GitHub repository and I've got your app, what does that look like in terms of how things are split into modules? Well, today, <coughs> in first place, the repository is the same for the entire team of the Android, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing uh, about the modularization. Uh, it's then like uh, you have the app model, of course, and uh, we don't have a, a core model beyond that. 
we have uh, models uh, split in, in LIBS, for example, network model, uh, mm -hmm. API, uh, UI model, uh, some things like that. And uh, the most important is not these models because these models is like some uh, avoid boilerplate code, all right? But uh, the models that uh, translate the business things is the features models. We have, I don't know, uh, seven models like that. Yeah. And uh, like, I will, I will open the, the project here and I will say for you better. Uh, we have, uh, for example, um, okay, uh, a signature, digital signature model, for example, mm -hmm. uh, um, reservation model, contact model, FAC, uh, frequent ask, asked question model, fidelity model, uh, and another kind of reservations, types of reservation models. So, and uh, the this is the way that we are trying to split. And uh, for example, in uh, reservation model, for example, what is what is the difference there? We have, for example, a uh, network there with the API, for example, is the same path. For example, I have an API with uh, the basic URL is agencies. So we have, uh, URL is agencias uh, and uh, suffix after agencias locally one, agencias locally two, and uh, agencias code, agencias. So the domain of the future of the reservation, uh, it's about, uh, it's around uh, agencies, shops, right? Right, okay. And uh, another kind of thing that, uh, easier to understand, I have a future uh, model uh, that use uh, for frequent asked questions and the domain is like, uh, for example, let me see, I'm sorry, one minute, please. I'll wait here. A fake API, for example. Uh, I have a fake API, fake not of false, all right? It's a FRQ API. So, oh, yeah. uh, I have a, a URL uh, like fuck, fuck, <laughs> and in Portuguese, <laughs> fake, uh, I don't know uh, how to speak this in a better way. FAQ, but, uh, we just say FAQ. FA, FAQ, yeah. 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 FAQ, fuck. Uh, uh, FA, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but in, first, <laughs> in first, <laughs> I got this part, all right? No, no, yeah. no, 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 uh, absolutely the, not. Yeah, <laughs> that is a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but uh, you are understanding. We are have another domain and this future and uh, future and uh, in contact uh, model, for example, uh, we organize the things like that. And uh, the uh, this contact model is not up. So the these best. are your these are your modules. You're you're organizing uh, uh, the modules. Co the business this business models. All right, I, yeah. we have app model. They call another models. All right, then other models, depth models know the other models, but a future models does know uh, uh, not necessarily each one, all right? Yeah. They split the, we split the knowledge and make the things uh, discrete so sizes. It's contained, right? Yeah, they the, the, that is a abstraction of the rules, business rules inside the, yeah. the any model. But uh, like I said, there are libraries and uh, actions model, authentication model, card model, common model, uh, co device model, feature toggle model, localization model, login model, there is thing like that. Cool. Yeah. You got any other technical questions, Rob? Um, that's a good question. Uh, not that comes to mind. I probably do, but none that come to mind and that I think I could fit in the next four minutes. Right, four minutes. I was just looking. I wanted to ask you some stuff about like, um, like the job market there. But oh, it's a good. It's good to speak. I prepare some stuff about it. Okay. Can you fit it all in in like four minutes? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Before that, I will speak the name of the team, 
Uh, it's important okay. thing. The guys is incredible. So, in iOS team that are David, Mr. Dave. Uh, Should uh, I look these guys up on Twitter? Yeah, uh, we could put there. And uh, oh, I forgot the name of the team. <laughs> what the? <laughs> fuck? Oh. Okay. All right. So there are another guys uh, who they are the true builders of the system because I entered the team after. I would like to speak that they are great engineers and uh, incredible. They did incredible work out there. You know? I'm not, I'm, I'm not remembering the name. You can the message time. us the names after yes, and I can put them in the description. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. But, but shout out to the team. Yeah. No but, uh, okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. So what in about Brazil the job market? market? Yeah. Uh, the job market in Brazil. Uh, okay. The mobile market, it's, uh, it's smaller than, I don't know, backend market or something more general stuff. But uh, for example, in terms of salaries, for example, for a senior Android engineer, for example, in Sao Paulo, we could take uh, an average salary would be between 80,000 and 90,000 uh, reais, for example. And uh, it's not so bad salary there. In Belo Horizonte, where I am living, it's between seven and 80,000 salary. And uh, uh, the market of software engineer in Brazil is growing up very much. We have more than 10 uh, unicorns uh, here in Brazil, like uh, New Bank, 99, uh, and uh, another uh, iFood, for example. Uh, I don't know if you listen already about New Bank, it's a FinTech. Uh, like uh, to enter there is like uh, entering in Google. It's very hard to enter there in the, the develop uh, very good uh, software engineering things. And uh, okay, and the mobile market is growing up very much, uh, have many opportunities, but uh, like I faced this year uh, when I was in an interview uh, to enter in another company in Belo Horizonte, I face a, a problem like uh, for uh, a specialist in mobile, you don't have so much opportunities yet. There are many opportunities for mid level, but uh, for example, if I was a back end engineer, uh, the world is for me. It would uh, have many other opportunities like that. But uh, the thing is growing up already. Like in our company, we have already 30. 30 mobile engineers, which works with Flutter, React Native, uh, iOS, uh, Android, and uh, this kind of stuff. So there's lots of jobs, is what you're saying. Lots yeah. of jobs, and especially for, especially for backend. Not only for backend, but mobile is growing uh, very much in Brazil. Uh, indeed, there are many opportunities. I cannot speak the opposite. But for specialists, it's not so much, all right? Uh, like a senior engineer, Android senior engineer, you don't have so much yet, I perceive. This is my perception, all right? Mm. Yeah, well, if they're developing, if, many, if other companies are using uh, architecture like you've described, the BFF backend for front-end architecture, there's not really any need for uh, an Android engineer with a ton of experience, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, they're just... yeah uh, uh, like, uh, for example, okay to build the architecture of the, our application, you would, would need to understand very well of uh, OK HTTP, like for example, beyond the retrofit or modularization stuff, uh, the process, uh, we have a continuous integration process, very good uh, indeed. And uh, this kind of stuff, you need a senior guy for to develop, but uh, to, to build uh, inter better interface, you don't need. Right. For no. to build the the started project, uh, the knowledge behind some things needs some kind of specialization. All right. All right. Well, Rob, if you got if you don't have any more questions, we'll uh, we'll say our goodbyes. Um. Yeah, I have no more questions. So yeah, go for it. Just I guess. All right. Wherever, if you, if you want to shout out where people can find you and all that stuff. And then we'll link your teams in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. After the show, just give us all the links that you want. We can shout out the people that you mentioned. And oh. uh, yeah, let people we can, know. We can shout out whoever you want. We won't know who they are. So yeah. yeah.
family members, friends. Hitler. I, I might throw maybe, maybe not that one. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you online? All right. I have a menu on the scene that we could speak about uh, protobuf, for example, protocol above, or that was something that we could speak. But uh, I think that time is now is not enough for that. No. Yeah, I, I should go for sure. So, uh, so uh, you don't want to tell anybody like your Twitter or anything like that? Ah, my Twitter. I don't work very much with inside the community, but uh, my Twitter is Fred Linares. And uh, my LinkedIn is Frederick Linares. My GitHub only has a, a, a Bluetooth driver there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's not important thing. Cool. Well, I had a great time having you on. I learned a lot of interesting stuff. This front end for ba or, uh, back end for front end thing sounds really interesting, actually. Um, you know, I thought I, I thought I had a good idea of like the ideal way to build an Android app using MVI, um, clean architecture, making mm -hmm. it testable, maybe use some modularization by feature. Uh, that was kind of how I thought would be ideal to build an app. And now that you've mentioned this back end for front end thing, it sounds really interesting because you, yeah, like you said, it's um, no matter what, if you have business logic in your app, you're gonna run into issues if you change something on the back end, um, yeah. especially, or if you're not careful about it anyway. So yeah. I enjoyed that. Thanks. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the tour through your architecture. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate very much this episode. All right. Cool. Thanks for coming. All right. Have a good one.